Hmm, hair is doing something weird to the... Ah, forget it. Never mind. Right. Uh, let's go. This is a quick Friday update. Now, I'm going away. I'm taking the kids away this weekend because I've been... Um, there won't be that much video going up over the weekend. I will be back with you on Tuesday. Please do check back next week. We've got some announcements to make. Hopefully that will be of excitement to you. If it's not, well, never mind. It's been a really full on week, as well as the usual uh, work that we need to do. We have been hands on with, I would say we, like you think it's like I've got schizophrenia. There's just me here right now, but there's, um, there are other people as well. So, the Black Magic Cursor Mini Pro, we have been hands-on with that. We've been having it in a live TV studio environment. We'll let you know how we're going with that. We've been taking it out in the rain to see how it will work as an everyday news gathering camera or ENG. We have been testing it for low light and the fixed noise pattern, uh, which has been a problem in the previous versions of the camera. Um, and there's plenty more that we want to do with it yet. So over the next few weeks, we will bring you that. As well as that, behind me here, we have been using the Blackmagic Web Presenter in its new firmware version and the AJ Halo, which well, you can't see, it's just over there. Off the bat, I'll say the AJ Halo is very, very good. Um, but again, next week, I will bring you a full video on that. The, what else have we been doing? Oh, we've been resetting up the studio. I might tie into the announcements for next week. And we've been testing the 6K video mode. Yes, that's right, 6K video mode on this, the Panasonic GH5. So this is a 6K video, true resolution actually 5K, but this is what it looks like. And I'll switch back to something more sensible. And that being said, if you want to use this 6K video in, 16.9, so that the aspect that you're currently watching this video in, it's effectively 5K, well, pretty close to being 5K anyway. So the 6K video mode itself, it doesn't appear in any of the video menus. Um, it's kind of tucked away in the in the photos option, the photos mode, which is a bit weird. But I think there's a few reasons for that. One. If you're here, well, you're not here, I'm here, but if you're in the UK or 25 frames per second regions, it only records in 30 frames or 29.97. If you're in the States, that's absolutely fine. Uh, there are no other shooting modes available for 6K. It also shoots only in H.265. The, in our current setup, actually, that's pretty difficult to deal with. We're having to use Edit Ready to convert them to ProRes and go from there. What I will do before this video goes out, so probably now to you guys, is a quick test of quality once we've taken the H.265 6K and converted it to ProRes. We're going to have a look at that against the 4K that I'm currently shooting and we'll see if there's a difference there. Right, so I'm going through this 6K and 4K footage, and it's actually quite interesting whether, well, let's start from the beginning. So, on the 4K footage, we throw that directly into the timeline and edit it natively. So, um, when we look at that at 100%, as you will have just been watching it, that's the quality you get. On the 6K, which is uh, H.265, we need to transcode that. So the best way we found to do it is to use Edit Ready or equivalent software, and we transcode it to ProRes. The reason we choose ProRes is it's visually lossless, and we should it's ProRes 422 HQ we're using. So that should preserve any detail. It shouldn't mess around with the gamma or anything else. It should be a straight conversion, and we should see what we get. Now the first thing I noticed with the H.265, for some reason, there was a big gamma shift in the in the video itself. You should see here, this is what it looks like. In fact, the, the settings haven't changed at all, only the focus in, in this room. Um, so this that we're looking at now is the same as the 4K stuff, and it's here on the screen. You've just seen it, you'll see it again in a second. The H.265 stuff actually is quite a bit darker. 
Um, but the characteristics of it, in terms of the depth of field, the the, the shutter, etc., they're all exactly the same. Obviously, this is 30 frames versus 25 frames. There's a slight shift um, in exposure, but shouldn't be anywhere near what we're seeing here. Anyway, the main thing I wanted to show you was if we bring this in to 100%. So we're on a retum display here, and you're looking through the screen. Anyway, you'll, you'll get the idea of what I'm talking about. So let's move this all to 100%. So there's the 4K video. Let's find a section where we've got some detail. So on my sleeve here, this bit's all in focus, and we can quite clearly see the texture. There's no noise or artifacting. That's a good image. We'd all be happy with that. However, when we go over to the the H265, let's find a section where I'm still. So I'm wearing a different top here, but the detail simply isn't there. This looks very reminiscent of that sort of artifacting you get when you heavily compress something. This is using the HEVC H265 codec, and I would say, I mean, let's look on the face. So on my face there, there is very little detail, whereas on four, in 4K, there's a lot more detail. You can see all the details in my furrowed, withered brow. So initially, my aside from having extra resolution in the frame, what we're seeing is less resolution in the picture. And on that basis, and that basis alone at this stage, and this is fairly rudimentary, but I can't really recommend shooting 6K. Frame size really doesn't matter that much because there are no 6K displays out there for, for watching this stuff. So they've clearly spent a lot more time getting 4K right, which probably explains why 6K isn't in the video menu because you'd be pretty disappointed. I would say that would be equivalent, the quality of what we're seeing at 6K is equivalent to a 10, 15 megabit high definition H.264 stream. That's my test. So that's the results of that. Now, because I'm not here over the weekend, I don't, well, like many of you, I watch loads of different YouTube channels, so I thought, well, I'd point you at one that's a particular favorite of mine at the moment. And disclaimer, they are my buddies as well, but do head over to Indie Projects and check out Theo and B as they are on their adventures. Um, if you get fed up of just reading and watching about camera stuff, watch people use it, they do some great stuff. Similarly, Last weekend I managed to tick something off my bucket list and we went down to Dungeness. Keen-eyed viewers, which I know there aren't many of you at the moment, will know that Dungeness is somewhere I've wanted to go for many, many years. I've never managed it. Well, I have now. We went down there last Friday and had a really good time. It was everything I hoped it would be. If you don't know what Dungeness is, it's a hot spot for photographers, video makers and bird watchers. Dungeness itself is really only known for having a, a power station there. And next to that power station is a big pebble beach with the abandoned remnants of an old fishing village. I believe there is some fishing that still happens there, but the boats, the little railway, and all the tools and machinery and huts, they're all still there. Um, it's, it's an incredible place to go. I took the Mavic and, and the GH5 down. Had a little bit of a play. Well, I'll, I'll put some stuff on the screen so you can you can see what that looked like. That's pretty well it for now. If you like any of what I do, please subscribe. And if you want to tell people about it, then even better. I will be back, I think, Tuesday. Tuesday's the plan. 
You may say something before then. Anyway, that'll do. I'm off.